So hello, I am just dropping in just to give a few tips for um, taking weight into the hands. So a lot of people find the weight coming down when we come into poses like plank or downward dog, um, they find it quite strong in their wrists. So we just wanted to share a few little tips with you. So if you come to hands and knees, just first of all, the first thing I would suggest is to take your hands as wide as your yoga mat. So quite often people have their hands quite close together. Um, this can cause a lot of tension into the shoulders and into the wrists. So if you take your hands as wide as your shoulders, but maybe a little bit wider, I like to say as wide as your yoga mat. And this can be quite a nice base to start with. So if you bring your hands down and then spread your fingers wide as well, don't have the fingers together. So the bigger the base of the hand, the less, you're going to dump down into the wrist, you're spreading the weight out. And then one by one, push into your fingertips like little suction cups. And then focus on your index finger and your thumb. And see if you can push down into the knuckle of your index finger. Push down through your thumb. And then notice if you're really pushing down. So I realize I just said push down. But now, with all that kind of awareness into your fingertips, that index finger knuckle, now push away lift up out of the shoulders okay so this is kind of a base this is quite strong in the wrists and this is a good base to start um, building up those muscles and then just release and just take a little wrist stretch so we're going to bring the back of the hand to the floor the fingers are coming in towards your knees you can take this one hand at a time you could take both hands um, just depending on your wrist so start off with bent elbows and really push the backs of your hands. Try and get the little finger knuckle down. It's quite hard to do. And then if that feels okay, do this one hand at a time or both. You can start to straighten the elbows. And then to take the stretch further, you can make little fists with the hands. Squeezing it in, but keep pushing the backs of the hands down and then release it out. And then I would just sit back and just take a really slow rotation into the, the wrist just to release. So there's a lot of muscles here that we, we just need to waken up, okay? Then when we start to take it up into a downward dog, let's do it in a puppy pose first. So take the knees back a little bit further, take the hands forwards. We wanna keep the bum lifted above the knees, the hips above the hip, knees. So maybe walk the hands forwards and then keep the hands as wide as your yoga mat and have that awareness, pushing into your fingertips, pushing into your index finger knuckle, the thumb, and then can you draw your wrists away from your hands and then draw your shoulders away from the wrists. So really drawing back big long arms. There's no real weight coming into the wrist here. We're stretching it back. Feel that and then bring it up. We'll take it into a downward dog. And I'll just show you some common mistakes I see in a downward dog. So we tuck, tuck the toes, lift the knees, and now keep the knees super, super bent. Send your bum back. And just think what we've just done in that little, that was called puppy pose. So this is coming into downward dog. A lot of people come here. So all of the weight from the shoulder is dumping straight down into the wrist. It's really strong. So we need to send your bum back, just like we just did, and lengthen the wrists away from the fingers, the shoulders away from the wrists, and the hips away from the, the shoulders. So a big long line, push through your fingertips and see if you can lift out of the wrists. So that would be the start of your downward dog and then from there you start to take the extra shapes. So bring it forwards and bring it down. Just sit back, just give the wrist a little rotation. So it's something to build up to as well. And if you find that in a class that they're holding it for longer, just bring it down. Bring it down to the knees, take it into this puppy pose variation, you're still getting the benefits. Um, but other options would be to have a folded blanket and you can bring that where the hands are gonna go. And if you bring the heels of your hands onto the, the blanket, your fingers onto the mat, keep that wideness into the shoulders and have that still sense of pushing down through the fingertips and lifting it up and back and just Kind of decreasing the angle on your wrists so it's not quite such a severe angle 
So you're just lengthening out, that's a nice option. Another option would be to use some bricks. So have the bricks on, I would go for the lowest setting, so you've got a wide base. And again, so just bringing the hands into the bricks, pushing down through the fingers, and then just see if maybe the little finger and the thumb wrap around the, the brick, and then taking it up from there, reaching it back. And you might find that you just lift away from the wrists a little bit. But at any point when you're here, when the body weight is forwards, you're dumping down. So you want to send it back, long arms, all the way from the waist to the hips. And then bring it forwards and down. And then always just take a little wrist rotation so you can bring the palms of the hands together. Just turning them around one way and the other. A little Mexican wave of the fingers is always quite nice. And just a gentle shake, not a vigorous shake, just a gentle shake of the wrists. And you can always, if you find after a class that the, the wrists are aching, just go back into that little wrist stretch, just to kind of counter the stretch. I hope that helped. Um, any questions, let me know, and uh, I'm here to help you. Thank you so very much. Cheers.